a lot. Uh, good evening. Uh, this meeting is uh, now called to order. Would you please stand and salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, good evening and welcome. This is October 17, uh, 2022, and uh, we are starting early this evening because we have a double bill, a double feature, or as my favorite cub would say, let's play two. Uh, this evening at 6 p.m. we are doing an a, a annual uh, Reed Field uh, Select Board gets a chance to speak with uh, chairs, meetings of different committees, boards, and commissions of uh, Reed Field. Um, and so thank you to those of you who are here with us. Uh, thank you to those of you who are on. Uh, and uh, we are grateful uh, to have this opportunity to do this. Um, I know that Catherine uh, cannot be here this evening. Uh, she is under the weather. Uh, so we are going to begin um, and uh, just basically introduce ourselves uh, if you don't know us on the select board and perhaps uh, do some of that. Um, Eric, we're just going to basically follow this uh, agenda, yeah? Yeah, I mean, if you want to make any additions or changes, certainly feel free. Okay. Um, I think that we'll have a little bit of extra time depending on how things go because we, sure. we don't always get everybody to show, yeah. um, but we could perhaps have some um, direct discussion, but really up to you how you want to manage it. Okay, sounds good. Um, I, I don't know if everyone has a copy of the select board goals or if we're able to put that up. Uh, Eric, or is that something, because it says here we want to talk about that, but I just want to, um, I just want to. Yeah, um, I can share, I think, okay. from the. Um... If you can share that while we do that, uh, I just want to have an opportunity um, to, to recognize, I would ask you to introduce yourselves, but you're going to do that hopefully when you come up to uh, the podium there and we won't cause Bill too much a Zoom issue. Uh, if you are on Zoom and you want to uh, participate or have anything to add, please let me know. Um, if you wanna chat, I will also be responsible for covering that uh, as well. Um, the uh, chat is open in case that is part of it uh, and we're still uh, welcoming folks in. Um, you ready, Eric? Uh, not quite. Okay. Yet. Yes, I'm still filling, here. filling for you. Um, excellent. Uh, tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to ask that you uh, be respectful. We're going to ask each uh, uh, chair uh, to give about five minutes, three to five minutes each, for a total of forty minutes. Um, it will help us continue to have the evening go pretty smoothly. Um, some of you may need more. Some of you less. Uh, but we appreciate that. I'll have the um, uh, stopwatch and I'll just sort of uh, wave at you. <laughs> Stop, uh, clear uh, during that. Um, and so uh, we appreciate that. <clears throat> what we're, uh, we're waiting on uh, for a copy of the select board goals, some of the select board goals that we um, set up uh, in our annual retreat. Um, the select board met uh, and we had an opportunity to uh, basically come up with some uh, goals that we have heard, things that we uh, were brought to us, um, and have an opportunity to um, basically share those uh, with you as a way of moving forward uh, in this. Um, Why don't you talk a little bit about how, um, how the process unfolded with the goal development? And, uh, I would love to do that, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying to help, help both of us out here. Yes, okay. So uh, the, the, every year since I have been on the select board, uh, and I am I'm the ranking member who is present, uh, we have done a, a retreat. And basically, it, I used to think it was like a field trip, but it's really not. Uh, we get together for about four hours, and we discuss items that we think are either pertinent to the town, have been brought to us by, uh, uh, citizens of Reed Field uh, or uh, items that are carryovers from previous years in terms of goal development. This year, we were lucky enough to have uh, Bruce Burgoyne, who was the uh, chairman of the select board for many years. Uh, I worked with him in my first years of the select board as well. Uh, he moderated this goal setting. Um, and it was a really great opportunity for all the members of the select board to participate. I like having the moderator because what, what it does is it gives me, as the chairman of the board, an opportunity to participate. 
and I don't feel like I have to regulate or run the meeting or moderate the meeting. Everyone sort of had an a, 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 a equal hand. Um, and so with Bruce as the head, we had a chance to sort of have some of that discussion be formulated through him. Um, and we managed to, to pare it down. It was a really nice process. Um, and I, I like to do this each year because these goals will end up being um, what guides the select board through some of the uh, actions that we do um, this this year. So, Eric, it looks like you're sharing your screen. I am trying here. Oh, I got the, yes. Wow, this, um, I feel that I talked so much. You did an excellent no, job, Dennis. I'm just going to have to hide this a little bit so I can actually uh, uh, stay participate. Okay, all right. This is uh, not showing up the okay. way I want it to, but just give me one second, Dennis. I'm trying to get the the, the menu bar off the top of the screen so I can actually get to what I want. Okay. Um, long story short, we're going to share those goals with you uh, as soon as we have. Oh, look at that. That looks like a thing. Um, we have them right here. Um, and, and basically, these are going to be some of the things that the select board um, pays attention to um, this year. Eric, I see them. Um, good. Yeah, they're not showing on that screen, but that's okay. So they if you want to, yeah. okay, yes, there they, they go. Are. That just okay. took that took a little bit. Good. So, um, Dennis, do you want to? Where do you want to be? Uh, can you scroll down for me? Yes, sir. Um, and we just want to uh, get to um, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Uh, in the meeting, what we also get a chance to do is go through, um, um, go through and look at what we've accomplished from the past, um, and sort of sort of translate that things that carry over things that we feel like we are done with uh, and things that we want to continue to work on. Um, we had some ideas here with uh, big ideas that we all brought in. Uh, Bruce did a great job of sort of getting us to um, bring in some of our bigger ideas, some ideas that people from the select board and from the public talked about. And Eric, if you scroll down for me just a little bit as you make that a little bit bigger, thank you very much. We'll get to our goals that we have actually uh, decided for this year. Um, and there are five main goals. I'm, I'm sure you can zoom into that uh, if you can. Uh, but the five main goals of the select board for 2022-23 are um, youth athletic field and finances, uh, including asking a June 2023 board <coughs> question uh, to gain voters direction on this item. I think it's a good idea to put it out to the voters. Uh, the Church Street sidewalk, uh, which is something that is ongoing. We just did the engineering and planning work for that. Um, and so we, we are progressing on that. Uh, enhanced use of the space at the Town Beach, <coughs> excuse me, with extensions of services, activities, and program opportunities, investigate physical improvements to the beach. There are uh, some things that we need to take care of down there, and I think it's it's a good goal. Uh, parks and recreation staffing and program goal carried over from previous year uh, to, to see how that gets attention and development. Um, and finally, gain a stronger relationship with local schools built on cooperation, collaboration, and effective communication. That's just an opportunity for the select board to reach out to the schools and, and be a little bit more uh, communicative and, and sort of give an opportunity to communicate back and forth. Uh, so those five goals are things that the uh, select board uh, came up with at this retreat. There are also what the things that I, I don't want to maybe phrase this incorrectly, but things that we want to pursue, but they have to go through Eric first. Uh, some of these sort of uh, uh, municipal <laughs> items, uh, such as um, uh, things like the moorings. Oh, yes, are you gonna do that now? Oh, go back right there. Uh, things like moorings, uh, we're gonna, we just need to look into uh, more information about that. And that's something Eric will do. Um, broadband extension. So right now we know uh, we with the broadband uh, network is still with the, the way it was, uh, but we're looking to uh, fill in uh, and that takes a little bit more uh, looking in there. Beach parking, things like that. Uh, that's something that we wanted to look at. Um, in, inventory all town properties and uses uh, was something that Catherine uh, wanted to, to do. Uh, and uh, uh, she's also doing a select board manual. Now that's funny. It says Kathleen, but I know it's Catherine. Uh, so that's a, a interesting typo. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, also the board notes there, uh, there's labor contracts, things that we have to do each year. 
Um, and so those are some of the things that came out of that. We good, Aaron? We got it, Aaron? We got the goals, yeah. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, so with that being said, we are going to um, then move to uh, our uh, presentations by our chairs. Um, and what we're looking here, I'm sure you got this uh, agenda beforehand, but key projects, accomplishments, objectives, things like that. Um, and if you are on Zoom uh, and are uh, a part of this to present, uh, please let me know. Um, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, yes, Pam, I see you. Um, and when it's time for the library, we'll get you taken care of. Thank you. Um, excellent. <laughs> Thanks. Good. Is anyone here in person, uh, Chair, like to start and lead us off? <laughs> oh, my Your point is, come on, come on. It's not like that now. <laughs> we have an alphabetical list on the website. I know. We, yeah, go ahead, Paula, please. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. And then I'll give you guys a chance to think about it. Pam, you're on deck. Um, so uh, remember, as we do this, not everyone knows exactly who you are. Uh, so if you don't mind introducing yourself, uh, what committee that you're from. Sure. Um, I'm Pam Mitchell, and I'm the library oh, board chair. Oh, uh, Pam, give me just one second. We're going to have Paula go first. Okay, sure. Yep, thank you. Paula, yep. you're, <laughs> go, go right for it. Yeah. <laughs> Pam, you're on deck. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Paula Clark. I chair the planning board. Um, thanks for the opportunity to be here tonight. It's good to see all of you. Um, it's been a busy year for the planning board. Uh, there were a significant number of applications and projects that came to the board for our review and consideration over the past year. Uh, as you probably know, the planning board has two principal responsibilities, uh, the first of which is to review and decide applications that come before us under the provisions of various ordinances that the town has, primarily the land use ordinance. <clears throat> Excuse me, but there are also some others, um, such as the solar ordinance um, that we do spend some time with. Um, there is a wide range of projects and activities that the board considers and that are proposed in town. Um, over the past year, um, a few on the minor end of the spectrum uh, had to do with the revision of subdivision plans, moving lot lines, uh, access points, that sort of thing. Uh, we had a garage reconstruction that had some difficulty with side setbacks. Uh, we approved uh, two new storage facilities in town, one for vehicles and equipment and the other for boats. So there are a lot of those types of applications that are relatively routine and take us um, a couple of meetings to decide, but uh, with no major issues attached. There were also um, a couple of very complex and challenging applications over the past year. Um, one of which um, had to do with a house reconstruction and expansion in the shoreline zone. Uh, that is one example. There have been several um, over the past few years. Um, these types of applications resulted really in a significant uh, investment in time and resources uh, for not only the planning board, but the town in general, and also for the applicants. And this is due principally to the nature and the complexity um, of these applications and some of the policy issues involved in, in deciding them. Um, another factor is public interest in these, which causes us to um, um, frequently uh, extend public hearings uh, to consider a lot of comment that's received from interested parties, both in writing and in the hearing context. Um, a couple of these applications also resulted in um, the intersection of the work of the planning board and the board of appeals. There was a variance request associated with one of the applications and there were also two appeals uh, that the board of appeals worked on and um, the planning board was directly involved in because they were a, uh, they were a result um, of a planning board decision or an issue that was before the planning board for consideration. <clears throat> um, one other um, uh, aspect that I would mention is that uh, frequently these uh, complex applications uh, involve outside parties. Uh, we engage the town attorney occasionally. 
um, MMA um, was consulted a couple of times on different aspects of these applications. And we also bring in the Cobbesee Watershed District uh, fairly frequently on, on applications to provide technical review for us. Uh, one other example of an application that we considered uh, this year, actually, I think it's on your agenda uh, for you to um, look at tonight. And it was a uh, second uh, medical marijuana facility um, in, in, the, uh, in the town. And that's something that went through the planning board process just recently. Um, our second uh, primary task uh, is to identify issues that need to be addressed through an ordinance in town. Usually that's through the land use ordinance. Um, our practice has been to put forward a package of revisions each year. Um, and that's based on issues that we've identified uh, through the course of the year that either need uh, clarification. Uh, sometimes the ordinance requires some housekeeping for, for clarity and consistency. And other times there are substantive issues uh, that need to be addressed. And again, I would use the solar ordinance as an example of that. Uh, something that uh, we brought forward in response to a substantive policy issue in town. So this past year, you probably recall, it wasn't that long ago, but we did um, provide a package of revisions and it included uh, some reorganization and revision to the site review process, principally for clarity and ease of use. Um, and we also included a new requirement for inspection of subsurface wastewater disposal systems in the shoreland zone when properties are being transferred. Uh, and that was something that we took our cue from state law. We brought that into uh, the Greenfield land use ordinance. <laughs> yep. You're doing great. Um, and uh, finally, I would just mention that the planning board uh, continues uh, to participate in the work of the comp plan committee. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them. I was almost there, Dan. Golly, Ned, I tell you what, it's, it's a virtue, isn't it? Uh, wonderful, Paula. Thank you very much. Um, if there are no other questions, anybody feel pretty great. Go for it. I have uh, one. Carol, yeah. Um, so, Paula, I know the planning board um, tends to meet remote. Are you guys, have you had an in person meeting yet? Um, there have been several planning board members who have attended the meetings in person, but there has not been a meeting uh, recently uh, completely in person. Um, it's, where all members are present. Where all members are present in person. Or many of them, like more than one. Right? Um, there have been a couple of members at in-person meetings, but probably not more than that. Is there a reason why the planning board, and, and I um, understand, uh, <laughs> the desire to be remote and the ease of being remote is just very difficult. I did it like once or twice because I was traveling and it was very hard. Um, but the planning board to add another layer of complexity is sometimes looking at, um, what do I wanna say? Plans, um, architectural plans, which is very hard to do remote. If somebody's pinpointing something in person and everybody's flipping through papers trying to, it just, is there a reason why going forward, the planning board cannot all attempt to meet in person unless there happens to be a very short-term reason for that? Well, uh, two, two things um, on that. Um, first of all, um, there are a number of members who are still generally uncomfortable um, in large group settings um, because of COVID. Um, and there are um, a couple of members who have medical issues that cause them to be even more cautious. And um, so I think that there is a, um, you know, a, a general discomfort. Um, and then uh, there are, as I mentioned, uh, specifically some medical issues. Secondly, I would say that I don't see that the work of the planning board is negatively impacted by having the hybrid meetings um, and some participants being by Zoom, by Zoom only. In terms of the plans, those plans are all available in advance uh, to planning board members, or they should be. And there have been a couple of situations where um, 
uh, there's been some, some confusion about which plan someone was looking at in the room, but all of the plans that are part of the applications are made available in advance because planning board members are expected to review all of that material um, before uh, the meeting actually takes place. Um, you know, I understand that there is a, um, you know, a general feeling that people being in a room together and being able to conduct business person to person near each other is a good thing in terms of relationships. Um, and I don't disagree with that, but I can honestly say um, that participating in planning board meetings uh, for these months, I haven't seen that the work of the planning board in general has been negatively impacted by them. I have watched a couple of planning board meetings and it was a little difficult when people are flipping through saying, what are you doing? So I guess my question is um, in general and everywhere and not just here in the town of we feel we, we distance, if you're not comfortable, you mask. Um, and there was a remote meeting where you guys were all remote and Ten of us were in the tiny little room downstairs, cheek to cheek, which was completely weird. And that was before restrictions on public meeting were lifted. So are these people out in the general public shopping, you know, doing doing other things? I feel like we that, don't need to talk about other members. I just yeah. say I, I can talk about myself and I can yeah. tell you that some of the other members I know feel the same way I do. I'm generally uncomfortable. I'm generally uncomfortable tonight, but I thought it was important to come because I know it's important to all of you. So I did that. Um, I go shopping um, and I wear a mask and I do other things and I wear a mask, generally speaking. Um, I minimize the risk. You're not going to eliminate risk. You minimize risk. And um, I'm all about doing that. Um, so that's my own personal philosophy, and I know that some of the other board members share that. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I think we're good for that. Thank you, Paula. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, Pam, as promised, you are up, uh, and we're going to put you here on the, the screen for everyone. Thank you, Paula. Okay. Um, anyone want to volunteer to go next? All right, Andy Tolman, you are on deck. Thank you. Pam, the floor is yours. I'm keeping time for you. Um, go right ahead. Thank you very much. And sorry, I sound badly, but I tested positive for COVID yesterday. So I am home. <laughs> but oh, that's um, right. yes, that's it. Yes. The and I have been trying really hard to not get it. But unfortunately, oh um, well, the, uh, as I said, I'm the chair of the Library Board of Trustees. And um, we've had a great year. We are very, very fortunate to have Melissa uh, Small as our librarian. She has more energy than I don't know what. <laughs> She's amazing. Um, but I guess the first thing I'd like to talk about is that in December of 21, we got a grant from the New England Rural and Small Libraries, which is through the Association of Rural and Small Libraries, um, for just under $5,000. And it, the money was to be spent on outreach efforts for uh, children and teen programming. So we used some of that money this summer to have a children's author from Maine, um, Chris Van Dusen, and we had about 130 people there, which is just incredible. And Beth Cully, who's a teen um, author, and I wasn't able to attend that. Um, but I think it was well attended. Um, and some of the money went to technology for the library. We purchased two laptops for um, patron use. And then some of the money was um, slated to go for electrical work and shades for the upstairs room at the library. And since that project hasn't gone forward yet, I'm not sure that some of that money may have to be that shifted until we can get the upstairs project going. And I understand that everything's backed up. Um, we had a great summer with the patrons at the library. It was really busy. A lot of people came in and out. Um, a lot of great summer reading program. Uh, and th this is a list of just some of the authors that um, Melissa had lined up. As I said, mentioned Chris Van Dusen and Betty Cully, uh, Matt Cost, Paul Dwarren, R.J. Jenkins, who's just from up in Kent's Hill, uh, Dale Potter Clark, Barbara Walsh, Justine Fontes, Hannah Firestone, Andrea. Uh, Lanny and Margie Patlack and they were the ones I heard were just wonderful and it was really neat to see how it's getting the community to come in and uh, come to programs at the library 
Um, and then, so those are some of our highlights and then things that we're working on right now, <clears throat> excuse me, are trying to get the community together. And I think we accomplished some of that with the programs this summer. And we're working on updating policies. Uh, and we're also, um, as you are, making a concerted effort to try to work more with um, everybody in the um, community, including the schools. And one of the ways that we're doing that, we have our story walk. We had the grand opening at, re at the elementary school in September with Barbara Walsh. And um, uh, then the stories that will be placed in there for November and December are written by Matt uh, Tavares, who is coming to speak at the elementary school at the end of November. So we're trying to work together and tie things um, together with that. Um, Melissa also has um, trying to work with the trails committee for the library story walk in the winter to have Owl Moon in there and try to work with them about having um, uh, a snowshoe walk and look for owls in, in the winter time. And she's worked with Ben um, Rodriguez, who's the uh, sexton for the library or for the cemetery to get together a Veterans Day. Um, uh, I guess not, I'm sure, I don't think it's a program, but just a Veterans Day display and maybe later do a program. And we've also been working a lot with the Age Friendly Committee and that they're having a theater production, I believe it's the 1st of November and uh, Melissa's been working with them on that. And also on, we've got technology handy helpers that come into the library and that's also working with the, um, the Age Friendly Committee on that. And uh, to finally, we just, we do have a long range committee and we're trying to reach out to people in our town who don't come into the library and who haven't used the library to try to find things that we can have that would interest them. So we uh, kind of put it out to any of you all as chair of the, chair of the different committees um, that if you have any ideas, of things that we could do together and, and have to use with the library, we'd be more than happy to hear them and we will probably be getting in touch with you all soon. Um, but as I said, it, a lot of the credit goes to Melissa. She's an amazing librarian and we're just really lucky as a town to have her. So thank you all very much. Yeah, I would agree. I think the library is doing great things. I love the, the, the programs. There's always something going on there. I think it's a yeah. tremendous asset for the town. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. I think it's, it's a, great, uh, a great thing for us to do. So uh, yeah. wonderful. Thank you very much. One last thing. We do have a wonderful board and everybody just is always willing to do whatever we need to do. So that, that's, that's also behind it. Well, thank you very much. We thank have you. heard from our friends at the library. Andy, you are up. Would you like to go next, Bruce? Yeah. All right, Andy, and then Bruce. Bruce, you're on deck. Okay, I'm Andy Tolman, and I will give you two for the price of one. I, I figured <laughs> you would. I have yes, the, sir. I love a good the, Andy value. Dubious honor of being chair of both the budget and the cemetery committees. <laughs> They're not related as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the budget committee is currently in recess. As you pro most of you probably know, most of our work happens in the winter and early spring. Um, we have had a really good budget committee, a nice diverse group, all of whom are smarter about budgets than I am, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, they, we had a fairly active winter. We looked at a couple of the big projects with, that didn't happen, but we had to figure out the budget for them in order for the town to understand it. Um, the, we are currently down one member. We lost a member to the school board. She decided that she couldn't do both anymore, that the school board was. So we are looking for somebody who likes digging into the details of what the town is doing, making sure that what we're doing is in line with our principles and our goals. Um, you know, we try to serve between the other committees and the town uh, staff and the select board to provide both to refine the budgets and give re uh, recommendations on what we think is the, the best thing for the town to do with our resources. So it's, it's important work, but it only goes on for about three months. So if somebody who's looking for winter relaxation, we'd love to have an application from somebody who's financially literate and interested. The cemetery committee is actually full right now. We actually have everybody we're supposed to have, which is wonderful. 
And again, it's a, a good, devoted, hardworking group. We are an advisory committee. We advise you guys and the town staff. We work closely with Ben Rodriguez, who is the sexton, along with a number of other jobs. And um, we have had a couple of interesting projects that are ongoing in various ways. I mean, we're doing things that are continuing. We are trying to keep the trees and the cemeteries in good shape, replace old ones, take the, the really old ones down when we have to, um, so that we don't have them falling on our gravestones, which is an expensive operation, and to keep the trees looking good so that they add to the ambience of the cemeteries. We also, on an ongoing basis, work on maintaining old gravestones, ones that don't have families who are in a position to take care of them. You know, we have cemetery stones that go back a couple of hundred years, so we're not going to find anybody to help us fix those. So we do every summer, Ben has a, a contractor that comes in and works with him to do some stones. We also hire folks from other contractors to do bigger jobs that need more equipment than we have. But that's going well, but it is going to go on forever because about the time you finish a cycle, something that you did five years ago needs touching again. We're also looking at the possibility of becoming affiliated with Reese Across America. That's a long-term project. We're not doing it in the next 10 minutes, but we may have something as part of this Veterans Day celebration that's a, a token of that. Uh, we are also in a, a long-term project, which we have started, but it's going to take a long time to finish, of trying to make a digital map of the cemeteries, which will really be helpful in helping us make sure that we locate new graves in places where old graves aren't, and keeping track of you know, the, the, some of the really old ones that are somewhat hard to find. So that we have done a lot of the basic work. We had the help of an intern a year ago, and we still have a fair bit of implementation work to do. One of our biggest problems is that, that Ben has more things to do than he can possibly ever get done. You know? And he tends to be pulled to the most urgent ones. And we don't argue with that. You know, If the road's falling apart, you've got to patch it you patch it, that's, that's more important than digitizing a cemetery. But um, at the same time, it means that, you know, we have a backlog of things that we think are important to the cemeteries that are just taking longer to get done than we'd like. But it's not terrible, it's just, it is the way it is. I'd happy, be happy to answer questions on either of those subjects mm -hmm. or go away and let you move on. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Andy. We appreciate it. A, a nice two for one uh, there. Uh, just a reminder, if you are joining us at home uh, for uh, this meeting, we are currently having our committee chairs uh, meeting. Um, our regular uh, meeting of the select board will begin at 730 uh, in case you have logged on and uh, are, are confused. Uh, next up, we have Bruce Hunter. Uh, and next up, Rob, would you mind being after him? All right. Bruce, just say your name, where you're from, and we can get started. I'm Bruce Hunter. I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission. It's great to see everybody here tonight. Um, about several years ago, we started to look at the grasslands and the fairgrounds. Um, we developed a mowing plan that, that we thought was going to work out there. And we got help from a grasslands habitat specialist, Laura Lecker, from the Somerset um, uh, Soil and Conservation District. So we've kind of, um, we're moving our focus away from the woodlands and forest to uh, look at and learn more about uh, grassland habitats. But the, this summer, we, we had them come on and look at the town landfill uh, for potential, uh, the, the field that's not used very much at the school and, and the fairgrounds. At the school, we, we observed uh, nesting bobolinks. So, 
which are, need protection from early mowing. That's why we have uh, recommendations to mow in uh, September or, or October, especially for the nesting birds. Um, we, uh, and then uh, there was proposed um, softball field plans that were presented to us. And uh, we worked with the rec, rec board and um, came up with uh, some conflicts. We engaged a, uh, a um, landscape architect that, that, that came up with an idea that saved money in terms of the amount of um, <clears throat> the amount of fill that needed to be brought in. That wasn't manifested on, on the amount of uh, the cost of the construction because it actually went up, but I think that was probably due to inflation of a lot of the products that were going to be used. So I think uh, through working with the, the rec board and uh, we helped find a, a cheaper solution to the ball field proposal in, in, in the fairgrounds. Um, we're also um, put, following the comprehensive plan as close as we can. We invited Jessica Gorton to a meeting at the town beach two summers ago. And uh, we've been, uh, and she talked about the sections in the plan that were relevant to, to the Conservation Commission. We um, have been trying to follow them. We lost uh, a representative on the uh, comp plan board and making it a little more difficult, but he just got back on there. So going forward, we're gonna be more involved with uh, following the comprehensive plan committee and what they're proposing and how it relates to conservation in the town. Um, <clears throat> we had a harvest in the town forest this past winter. That, that looked pretty good. Uh, we, we were out there on Sunday, cleaning up some of the uh, sticks and logs that were on the trail out there. And got a look at how it uh, turned out. Uh, I thought it turned out pretty well. Um, <clears throat> we do a, a lot of trail maintenance at the Torsey Pond Nature Preserve and in, in the town forest. We just talked about the town forest. But every time a storm comes through, like one did just a couple of days ago, we have to go down to towards the Pond Nature Preserve and clear out the trees that have fallen across the trail to make it um, walkable for, for the people who go down there. Several, maybe 10 years ago, before I even joined the commission, there was a couple of years where data on vernal pools were collected. And after I joined the commission, I sat down with Tim Sniffen and went, started to go through the data. And we finished that and we expect to prepare a map this year of, of vernal pools in, in Reedfield based on those data. About a minute, Bruce. Okay. Um, we um, edited the conservation and recreation map and published a new one last summer. Um, we expect in the future to be looking at the open space plan that was written in 2006, I believe, and uh, some seeing if it needs edits uh, and, and uh, we'll edit it if necessary. We're also uh, considering as, nature, as an educational project, the uh, construction of a pollinator garden in, in the fairgrounds. Thank you. Any questions? It's right down in the town office. There's a little, you can get it there. And, and if you don't see the map, you just ask um, our uh, person, I don't know who that is, or, or Kristen. Yeah. Yeah. But, right. uh, awesome. Eric, Thank you, Bruce. What's the name of you? Are you assistant counselor? You're up. Yeah, we can make those available anytime. Yeah. Later. Yep. Thank you very much. The most recent one on the website, though, is 2019. So you can check that. Oh, that should be right. That 
was it last year? Was it last year you said you got paid with it? Uh, last, it may have been spring of 21. Oh, well, I'll check on that. I'll yeah. make a note. It says, it says 2019 on here. So. And? It's that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I spent the blip. Ron, whenever you're ready, say your name, introduce yourself, tell your committee, uh, okay. and we'll listen. I'm Rob Peel. I'm chair of the Trails Committee. And I'd like to thank you for hosting this meeting. I always learn stuff about the town from coming to this meeting, even though it's only once a year. Um, what the trail committee does is we um, create, build, and maintain trails in the town. And some of those trails are on town land. Others are on a combination of town and private property. Um, much of our maintenance work is focused on the fairgrounds trails, given that those trails are the most uh, heavily developed and the most heavily used. And I just want to point out, we track our volunteer hours spent doing trail work. And so far this year, I have 170.5 hours, which at minimum wage, I think is 12.75 an hour right now. Uh, that comes out to $2,173.88 of value that we provide to the town. Uh, that does include our school days when we bring students from Moranacook and Kent Hill to work on our trails. So those uh, um, efforts are included as well. Um, we have a number of trails. I won't bother listing them all. Um, ones that have been developed or are under development recently. Uh, one is the Morrow Road connector, which goes from um, the end of Millstream Road up to the beginning of the Morrow Road, which then connects over to Nickerson Hill Road and takes people off of Route 17. And we've heard from a few people how much they really like that trail. It uh, creates a much safer route and helps connect things like the town farm um, snowmobile trails and our fairgrounds trails and the trails over by Millstream. So that was a nice addition. It is on a town right of way. It took relatively little effort to create. Um, another project that we are working on and have been where I think the town trails committee has been working on this project, the Carlton Pond Trail for probably approaching 10 years, uh, including probably the first five or six years, we're mostly having periodic meetings with the Greater Augusta Utility District to try and work out what we could do. Um, and I'm happy to report that we are still hoping to open that trail this fall. And it's gonna be a approximately 3.2 mile loop trail, which would take you down along Carlton Pond and then back up to the access road or trail and then bring you back to the parking area. So that I think is an exciting project. Um, the maps of our trails are on the town website. They're available as paper copies in the town office. Uh, and we've recently been working with Dennis to create, what do you call those? Those are QR codes. QR code yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, symbols to put on our kiosks. So you can walk up to the trail, put your camera on that symbol and get a map of where you're going on your phone. So that's an exciting uh, new thing that Dennis out of the blue offered to do for us. So thank you for that. Um, I do want to let you know that we do want to collaborate on activities on our trails. Um, so feel free to come up with ideas. Uh, you can do things, uh, you know, we don't need to be there as part of it. Uh, you can do your own groups activities, whether they be recreational or library or whoever. Um, we do kind of like to know a little bit about what's going on, but as long as it's something non-consumptive and doesn't uh, affect the trail, damage the trail or create excessive wear, you know, feel free to get out there and use them. 
Um, we meet live and on Zoom, and I believe we've been, our, our Zoom period was relatively short, I think maybe a year or so, although we still do have people on our committee that attend via Zoom for various reasons. So, and I think that's a good thing. We're always looking for new members and volunteers. Um, we're a relatively large committee. We have 13 member slots plus some alternate slots. And I think there was only one brief period of a few weeks when they were all filled since I've been on the trails committee and that's about five years. So we'd love to have more people come and join us. And with that, does anybody have any questions? Uh, great work. Thank you very much for the trails. One of my favorite parts about Reedfield. Uh, and, and, you know, you see other, um, I know that uh, I, I work uh, in Monmouth and uh, Monmouth uh, recently put out a survey uh, about some of the things that the uh, citizens in Monmouth uh, wanted to prioritize. Uh, and number one, far and away, was more recreational out activities outside and, and more trails. Uh, and so it just it just made me proud of, of, of living here and all the work they do. So I'm excited for the Carlton Pond one. Yes. Oh my gosh, me too. That'll I be love great. snowmobile in that loop. So Hannah, you. you are up next. You're on deck. <laughs> say your name, you know, introduce yourself. Like we don't all the things. You. I like how you told Bruce to say where he's from, but I think we're all from Richmond. Uh, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> What's your name, where you're from? It's the, it's the show business. So I Bruce okay. ignored that. So <laughs> <laughs> I am Hannah Flannery. I am the president or person, the head person of the uh, Reedfield Recreation Committee. Um, We've, I, I love coming to this as many people said because I hear about all the other things because I feel like we are doing a lot of things in the rec department all the time, <coughs> which we are. But um, so last fall we started, uh, as Bruce mentioned, working through um, or meeting with other involved parties on a proposal that we wanted to um, expand the fairgrounds property to accommodate for some more recreational activities. Um, so in November, well, let's start with the fall. In the fall, we ran our soccer program for the first time without masks and outside and full um, teams um, with, uh, yeah, all of it going from pre-K to sixth grade. All the teams meet every Saturday, play games um, at the school complex because it's available for us to use at that time. Um, so last year, I think I was looking at 2021 numbers. So I would say roughly 160 to 200 kids involved in the Saturday um, soccer program in the fall. Um, and then we, in November, we had a meeting with all the involved parties. In October, we did our trunk retreat um, and also a movie night that got rained out. So it was held here at the town office. Our trunk retreat, we combined with the um, library committee and also the meeting house, as Rob mentioned, the trail use, um, the meeting house is a lovely <coughs> pumpkins aglow. So we were able to have trunks lined up inside the gate there um, for everyone to walk through for the kids to um, get treats and then walk through and around the trail with all the pumpkins lit up, which mm -hmm. is a really fun event. So that is also being held again this year um, in that capacity. Um, last winter, uh, um, after we'd start our basketball season with roughly 200 kids, basketball pulls in um, all of the town. So um, all of the Moranica community um, signs up through our read for the basketball program. And then that's held at the um, gyms at the school. So that started still under COVID protocols for inside use. So kids were playing with masks on for a good portion of the season. And then that was lifted um, and I think every kid said Yahoo when they had to play with a mask on anymore. But, um, and then we had a really um, fun winter fun day where there were plenty of broken sleds and lots of hot chocolate for all. Sean's <laughs> daughter, I think, smashed her sled on the first trip first down. Yep. And we might have made a resolution to never hold in uh, winter fun day on that icy of a <laughs> hill again. But either way, it was a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> We also did our ice fishing derby as a youth derby on the um, lake and also as sort of a fundraiser. I'm not sure what the total funds were raised last year for that. Um, then as the ice melted, we moved into softball and our baseball spring season. Um, probably one of the largest groups of kids we had 
uh, 11 different teams um, from that like four or five year olds playing t-ball all the way up to 12 year olds playing uh, major baseball. We had all stars, some kids from Reedsville playing an all-star team for 10U, some at the 12U level, and then um, we took a 9U level to a state tournament because the districts um, that we played in didn't have a representative for 9U, so they told us we could take the team straight to the state tournament. We kind of amazed everybody there because the talk started around that, oh, they didn't even play in a district tournament, um, and we we competed like we <laughs> Sean will agree. Um, we kind of surprised everybody. Teams thought they were just going to run over us in three or four innings and we battled back on both games and played hard. So that was pretty fun. Um, just an extension of what our rec programs helped develop in kids. So um, then we also did our Easter egg hunt at the church road um, complex, which we hadn't done before. We had all the little kids inside the fence hunting for eggs and all the bigger kids and outside the fence probably running through the woods along the trails and doing all the things they shouldn't do. But um, in March, we held uh, still through meetings and uh, working through the development of the proposal for um, more rec development at fairgrounds. We had a, a butters meeting in March with anybody who had land abutting the property who wanted to learn about the project. Um, about a minute, yeah. Okay. Um, and then we, uh, worked our committee worked hard to um, educate people about the whole um, process of the development and why it would be a good idea to vote for it um, all, uh, what we found rather difficult um, honestly because our committee is made up of working parents most of us are coaching the team or two every season um, to help our programs run that's one thing we're always looking for if anyone wants to know what we're always looking for people would like to coach and help kids um, for our teams but um, so we realized probably a little bit too late that the whole education process and trying to get the um, development approved was a little more overwhelming than we realized it would be. Um, and then we also did Refill Heritage Days in August, which brought back our amazing kickball game. And I think, yeah, that's a good wrap up. Right I now. think that's a great way to <laughs> this out. Thank you so much, Anna. <laughs> Um, anything else? We're just moving right along. Or, I think we're good. Uh, doing okay. Yep. All right. Wonderful. All right. You are up. You may introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> tell us your committee. There you go. I'm uh, Mike Lavers. I've been chairman of the road committee for five years. Um, we're a fairly low key group, mostly uh, retired engineers and other technical professionals. I work in project development at the DOT. Um, we focus primarily on advising the town manager, who's also the road commissioner, on uh, projects that will fit within the budgets that the uh, select board sets for both summer and winter road maintenance. Um, the town largely is in charge of roads that are not state roads. And I think there's only three state roads in town. There's Route 17, Route 41, and North Road, correct, Eric? Yep. And the town is in charge of the maintaining dozens of other miles of roads that fall under our jurisdiction. About, I'm going to say 15 years ago, the uh, town invested heavily in rebuilding every single road in town and took on considerable debt to do that. And so we've made it our mission to make sure that those roads stay in good shape. Um, right now, what we're doing is a, an inventory of every road in town. We've carved it. There, We've got five members We've carved it up into five zones. We basically do some windshield surveys to see what condition each road is in. And then we're gonna make recommendations to the select board to see which roads need more attention, which roads are still in good shape so that we protect that investment that we've made. Um, other things we do, uh, we recommend, uh, we review the plowing contracts, uh, we review the uh, summer road budget Within the budget, we uh, recommend which road should be done and which can be held off so that we, again, stretch the dollar as much as we can. And uh, right now we are, uh, the town just signed a uh, contract for engineering work for the church road sidewalk. And uh, we're hoping that uh, that can be designed and uh, built uh, eventually. So, as I said, we're a fairly low key group. We, we take care of the roads, but you know, it's important. So if uh, anybody else has any questions, I'd be happy to answer.
So thank you very outside, much. I just yeah. quickly outside yeah. of Church Road that we're starting to kind of work on too with the ditch. Right. Is there a road that the commission you guys have kind of thought soon is something we got to be tackling? Or Eric would probably be in a better position than me to answer that. Um, I think that well, we have our our. Our uh, work plan. So we have every road in town put into a spreadsheet with uh, when it was last paved, how wide it is, how much material is required to keep it up. Um, the road committee was instrumental in helping develop that pavement condition, like um, uh, Mike was saying, that they review that helps inform that. Um, so uh, we basically rely on that to indicate what's kind of next. Uh, I guess the one thing I would say off the cuff would be um, uh, Lane Road and North Wayne Road. Uh, our, our needing work. Um, but really, one of the things that we've been seeing is townwide, uh, we um, need to do more um, tree work and ditching and culvert work um, and escalate that effort uh, because it seems as though every road is suffering from too much shoulder material. Uh, and um, I think that's going to be one of the things we're going to talk about more actively in the budget process. But. Yeah, as I said, Eric will present the list of priorities and we'll make recommendations based on his expertise as road commissioner. So. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I know we have not heard from the Solid Waste and Recycling Committee, but we do have Catherine with us. Is she, I know I don't think she is the she is the chair. She is the chair. Okay, yeah. I did not I did not realize <laughs> that you were the chair, Catherine. Please forgive me. Um, are you in a spot where you would like to give us an update about your committee? Sure. Can you hear me? Uh, we sure can. Okay. Uh, so the Solid Waste and Recycling Committee just uh, last week met for the first time in a location other than Reed Field. That was a coming out of the pandemic. Um, it's been The committee has been fully active throughout the whole pandemic time. Uh, we currently have a full slate of members from each of the three participating towns, Fayette, Reedfield, and Wayne. Um, we help in, I shouldn't say we help develop the budget, but we um, help with directing things uh, based on input from the transfer station manager and the town manager. Um, there have been some great improvements over the last year. Um, some great work done to the buildings there. The uh, the shed where you first drive up where the attendant stands. We also had a lot of work done to the old garage type building where the swap shop has just reopened this past year. And the compactor building was also renovated <clears throat> um, so that that's now more of an employee break room and a control room. Um, we had new gates put in across many of the, um, the in front of the bins to help protect People from falling in, especially to protect employees from falling in, that's where our greatest liability um, exists. We're still trying to get lights put in on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the unlit area, which is over where we drop off wood and appliances so that they can be more safely accessed during this time of year, say through March, uh, while we uh, have darker afternoons. Um, the transfer station stays on budget <clears throat> for the most part. We are anticipating a small increase um, over the next year because like everything else, prices are going up. So when our prices for tipping and hauling go up, we have to pass that on. Um, so I, I think that's what I can tell you. Excellent, thank you, Catherine. Anyone uh, about the Solid Waste and Recycling Committee? Uh, I think that leaves us one more committee, the Heritage States Committee. Who's that? Uh, and that's uh, that's me. Um, and so I thought I would uh, wrap it up unless there's anyone else that I'm missing or any other committee commission. Yes, ma'am. Comprehensive plan? Are they not here? Or are they? Uh, yeah, Jess isn't here. Okay. Nobody is here. Okay. No. No. Um, so let's do the the Heritage Days committee. Um, Heritage Days committee this year was me. So let me just say that one more time. The Heritage Days Committee this year was me. Uh, we didn't have anyone apply for the committee. We didn't have anyone uh, join us or uh, be interested. And that's fine. I felt like Heritage Days still was very successful. Um, and uh, despite a little bit of a, a, an undercurrent of dissatisfaction with one of the events, um, I would say that overall we had a really nice 
uh, stretch from um, all the way from downtown to all the way to the beach, all the way up to the fairgrounds field. Um, something was happening uh, right here in Reedfield, and it was really nice to have uh, a lot of different folks uh, be a part of that. Um, I felt like things at the beach, having things at the beach, we made some discoveries this year. Parking at the beach could work. It can be safe. Uh, and, and that's something that moving forward, we'll just simply do. I, uh, we had been resistant to it because I wanted to use some of that space, uh, but I felt like it really worked well. We had, uh, we engaged the service of a sheriff uh, to be at the top of the road to help with entrances and exits to that space, just to add a little extra safety. And I felt like that worked well. Things that we did not do this year, we did not have a shuttle bus back and forth around town. Uh, we did not, uh, we, we just determined that it wasn't being used enough to, to justify the expense. Um, and, and so we didn't do that. We didn't do, um, we also did not do food trucks this year. Uh, we uh, had a food sponsor, the Weather Bank sponsored the food for Heritage Days, Burgers and Dogs. Uh, down there, and we had some other groups giving out some some desserts. So uh, the the food I think worked out a little bit better in terms of that as well. Having the rec department do the kickball was fantastic. It was a great event. I like to do kickball because if you can kick a ball, you can play in the kickball game. Um, and so we're always looking for ways to improve. Uh, the maker's market is a direct uh, part of years of talking about having more of that happen. Uh, business open house, things like that get added each year. So we're always looking to do it. But it is nice to have some folks join that committee. So um, if you are interested in scheduling some events, um, this year I discovered that we don't have to meet that much as long as, uh, you know, we have people who are interested in being there. So um, that was really uh, the, the Heritage Days this year. Uh, looking forward to it next year. And um, I think it would be nice uh, and I'll say it publicly uh, to to maybe maybe get get out of this position for Heritage Days and, and hand it over to someone else uh, at some point, um, you know, just just looking towards the future. So um, I appreciate the support of the, the Reedfield folks that come out and everyone who is a part of um, Heritage Days. You guys have any questions about that? All right. So uh, if that is everyone, and I think we have, thank you. First of all, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Dennis, pretty incredible. Yes, sir. Go right I, ahead. I should mention maybe the age-friendly committee. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Chair is, is not here, but I've, I've been the board rep on that. And just yep. one or two things that I think um, people should probably know. One is that uh, the Neighbors Driving Neighbors program, the they're actively looking at trying to get involved with that. Um, but I think that's going to be down the line a year or two, just in terms of logistics. But we did also have another thing that they'd asked um, to uh, see if we could reinstitute the senior cafe at the middle school. Mm. And um, so I told him, I, I would talk to Rick Soroyce, the new principal there, and I spoke with him last week and he was great. He got back to me like just before the meeting and said they met with their leadership team today and they voted unanimously to support that. Right. And we're going to meet with the, some reps from the age friendly committee and the middle school to make that happen again pretty soon. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. What is the senior cafe? They they would meet in the in the middle school. Um, I want to say one day a week uh, in the mornings, and uh, some students would serve treats for them. They people have a chance to talk, and I I know that they are hoping to try to get the middle school is hoping to try to get more interaction with the. Uh, students and the um, senior citizens, like maybe some yeah. story time, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a great, and, it's um, a great thing. So it's, I think that that's positive. That's, that, that's going to happen. And Rick's been really encouraging about it. So that's cool. So we're accomplishing one of the goals as well, building those yeah. community uh, things. So the school so, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we are, uh, I'm going to ask Catherine if she's still on, um, because she did the work on this. We wanted to do a, a discussion of the updated board committee and commissions guide. Um, and, and do that, or, or unless Eric, that was something you had planned on, but since Catherine is here, I want to see if she would be willing to do that. Um, sure. I'm not sure what you want me to do, but 
I can well, give we, a little uh, synopsis. We just wanted to maybe talk about, you know, as people come in as new members, et cetera, et cetera. We, we uh, in fact, maybe, maybe you don't even, I, you may be absolved of this. We just want to make sure that as we go through, uh, Catherine spent a lot of time last year updating some of the boards, committee, and commission guide. Um, ideas that, that sometimes, you know, as we, we move away from because we get so set in a way of doing things, but things like minutes, uh, I know that's been something that, that has come up a lot is, is making sure we have current minutes, getting the minutes to us as soon as we can. Um, things like uh, participation, uh, along with the town's remote meeting policy and, and things like that, how, um, are, you know, how are things going? It helps us in the minutes to, to keep things uh, together. Uh, I also think in that committee guide, it helps with uh, getting folks uh, to know that these positions are valuable um, and volunteering for the town is very important, especially in this. Um, Eric, anything to add to that? Just, just as a way to say it, it's right online, you can get it easily, um, so it's accessible. So any chair who is here, make sure if you, if you want to familiarize yourself with it, with your committee with it, please do. Um, uh, and I think it's a, a good resource document. Eric? Sure, I'll just add that um, it really is a way to help maintain some institutional knowledge uh, for all of our, our groups. Uh, and also it's a way for volunteers, prospective volunteers who might have an interest in joining a board or committee uh, to be able to look and find out you know, what each of these groups do in, in quite a bit of detail uh, because it includes things like their, their basically their charge, what their, what their duties are. Um, uh, and it can be a resource in that way as well. So uh, really up and down um, the spectrum, it, 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 it's, it's there for everybody. Um, and I, I think it's been, it's interesting. I, I, um, when I first started with the town, we had a committee on committees and that was a big joke, but uh, that was really what started pulling all this together was helping it, so that we had in one place all that information. Uh, and I see a lot of value in that now. And I'm really glad that it was updated because it does help set the direction and make things clear for everybody. So wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so, so just having the chairs here uh, together, being able to say that uh, and just, uh, you know, you don't have to pour over it. You just have to know that it's there. Uh, and, and we highly recommend you check it out. Um, the next item. I think Catherine wanted to say something, Dennis. What's that? Uh, Catherine. Oh, Catherine, are you ready? Oh, yes, there you are. I'm sorry. I it's missed okay. you. I couldn't Go figure ahead. out how to raise my hand on here. It's been a while. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. You, all right. you raised your um, voice. So just a couple things to point out. Um, it is important for the chairs to know what their duties are. Things like making sure that an agenda for the meeting gets sent to the uh, town office at least three days prior to the meeting. So that can be posted online. Um, I think those things get posted on the actual committee pages. Um, and to make sure that your meetings are also noted so they're on the calendar <coughs> so that citizens can look at the town calendar online and see when things are happening. And to make sure that your minutes actually get sent um, the new guideline was for those to be sent within a week of when um, we last met. And those can be unapproved, just draft copy of minutes, um, but at least they're there so that people know that something is coming forward from the next time you meet and you approve your minutes. Uh, and then a few housekeeping details, like making sure you know when your members' terms are expiring so that you can let them know that they need to re-up um, or to let you know officially that they're not going to. Um, so things like that. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Kat. Um, our next item on the agenda is to talk a little bit about the fiscal 2024 budget process. Uh, it says 10 minutes, but I bet you can do better. I can do much better than that. Uh, I'm going to share my, uh, my screen here. And uh, so uh, every year we do uh, revise and um, try to improve the budget process. Uh, this year is no exception. Uh, I will make a note that what we're going to be looking at here um, has not been approved by the select board. Uh, it's on the agenda for tonight. Um, and we also have the, um, uh, the budget goals, which the select board will be working on tonight. The process really starts with the select board and the select board goals. Um, obviously, boards and committees bring projects forward. They bring recommendations. They, um, they review and, and comment on, on the budgets as they're presented. But um, the select board uh, you know, is very much in, in the fore on putting those priorities forward. Uh, what they've tasked me with doing is trying to make that as efficient a, possible, as a process as possible. Uh, and so every year, I come together and, and, and uh, put forward a, um, a, uh, a schedule. And this is the wrong document. Um, one second here. 
this is the one I wanted right here. Uh, and so this is the schedule that I have put together for the, um, the select board to review if it wants to. Um, Okay, there we go. All right. Um, we're not going to go through every one of these items. Uh, we're not, I'm not even going to come close, Dennis. What I'm going to do is point out some of the highlights. Uh, I, appreciate I thought I'd scare Dennis a little bit with like so 45 bad. lines of text. Um, but basically, we're starting earlier this year. Uh, we're starting with some goals uh, that prioritize um, looking at capital investments earlier than we have in the past. Uh, because we know two things, um, uh, the cost of borrowing and the cost of of, of expending money right now uh, is more than it has been, significantly more. Interest rates are almost double. Um, we have to think carefully about what projects we pursue and, and how, um, and whether or not they fit into this year's budget. So we're moving that piece up so we can, excuse me, be more mindful and, and, and deliberative about moving those things into the budget in conjunction with other items. Um, another thing that we have done is tried to uh, spread uh, things out a little bit more. Um, these meetings, uh, you know, the, the blue is um, uh, blue is select board, yellow is budget committee, uh, green, when you put them together, that's a joint meeting. Um, these things happen every week or two. Uh, and so making uh, a system and, and, a, and a schedule of meetings that is bearable for the select board and the budget committee is really <coughs> important because it's a lot of work for both of those groups. Uh, and it helps give time for people, including the boards of committees and the public to digest some of this information. Uh, because we've moved things around, uh, we have had some changes in the sequencing of um, what's presented when, and that's something that the committee chairs want to be aware of is that um, we usually do three groups of departments, departments one, departments two, and departments three. Um, those have shifted around a little bit. Departments one, that first group that includes general government and a few others, still very much the same. Um, but departments two and three have kind of been merged and, and, and switched around a bit. So um, I will be sending out a memo uh, once we have a select board approval of the draft schedule and um, we have select board budget goals and over overall goals that we can forward. Um, once all that stuff comes together, uh, most of it after the meeting tonight, I'll be putting together a packet for the, the committees and commissions that includes all of those things, the schedule, the, the goals, uh, and, and hopefully um, it makes things easier. Uh, not always the case, but that's the goal. Um, I will point out that we are looking at um, uh, June 13th as a town meeting. And one of the most important pieces that chairs want to be mindful of is if you are proposing any kind of ordinance uh, or ordinance revisions, uh, that those need to be um, submitted to the select board by March 13th. Uh, that's a little bit earlier than normal, but maybe only by a week or so. The reason being is that we have to get this stuff through to legal review. We have to make sure that we have time to get it ready for the warrant which has to be fully prepared and printed 60 days before town meeting. So we really have a process that is backed right up in large part because of that secret ballot process. Uh, another important date are the public hearings. It, it is always nice that if uh, we are discussing the budget that, that we have at least um, some representation from boards and committees, um, particularly the budget committee, but um, they usually show up most of them anyway. Um, especially Andy, he's always there. Um, but uh, I, I think that uh, we have a pretty good budget process so far. Uh, again, the priorities are going to be um, uh, on capital uh, and being mindful of the fact that we're going to have cost increases across the board that we're going to have to contend with. So um, everybody should be mindful of that as we go forward. And um, we're going to have a lot of time um, to, to work on this stuff. Budgets, the draft budgets are due basically the end of the fiscal year, uh, or end of excuse me, end of the calendar year, December thirtieth, uh, December thirty first, depending on on whether it's a Friday or not. But uh, that's just for a draft budget. So we're not looking for final numbers. We're just looking for something that we can use for bringing into the budget process. Uh, so that gives you hopefully November, December to have a couple meetings to get together some basic numbers. Uh, and as always, uh, I'm, I'm available to help pull information. Um, Teresa is a resource as well. Uh, we're here to help you um, get information to us and to the select board uh, to help cost things out if you need it. Uh, but we wanna be a resource and we wanna make sure that we have uh, you know, a very uh, thoughtful 
deliberate budget. Um, we can't always keep costs the same every year. We, we try, we do the best we can. And I very much appreciate the, the, the boards and committees being diligent about that. Some of you guys, I think probably ought to be a bit more um, 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 spending some more money, honestly. Uh, but we'll talk about that individually. Um, one of the things I noticed during the discussion the chairs just had is how much of a center Reedfield is for recreation. We're not a service center for strip malls. We're not a service center for big box stores, but we're a, a recreation and outdoor center for our region. All of the, the sports teams, many of them for, for youth sports come to Reedfield. Um, we have some of the best roads in town, which isn't really recreational, but it helps us get out. Um, we can ride our bikes and, and, and not yeah, worry about the, hitting a yeah, pothole, yeah. you know, but, but it, you know, trails, all those things. Um, we do a very good job of that. And I, I appreciate the fact that the select boards made that a priority and that others have kind of brought that to the fore and said, hey, we're really good at um, doing those things outdoors. And I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that in the budget process. That's my spe spiel there. Probably a little Thank bit more you, than I wanted, That's but you know. Okay. Yeah. We're just, we're, 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 I got excited, Dennis. I'm sorry. Right along. That's yeah. all right. We have about 15 minutes left. Um, and, and what I'd like to do is we have some time in here for open discussion. That would be um, if, if anybody has any questions from any of the chairs groups, if anybody from the select board has uh, any questions, just a reminder, if you have logged on, uh, we are just wrapping up the annual chairs committee meeting uh, here in Reedfield as part of the select board uh, evening. Uh, the select board meeting regular uh, will begin at 7.30 p.m., uh, just as a reminder. So uh, anything, any questions, anything from the department heads? Now is your time. Yes, please, Rob, go on up to the, you got to go up to the thing. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. <laughs> and the select board um the trails that emanate from the parking lot a couple of them are really reaching the point where they need work and we realize that but we've stayed away from them because the development of the fairgrounds is still up in the air are at what point are we gonna have a schedule for ongoing fundraising starting development any of that is that anybody have a sense of that i guess uh thank you rob uh, if i understand correctly you put off some work uh, around the parking lot while we wait to see about the development of the fields is that correct yes um excellent uh eric can you answer that should we should we ask i mean quickly uh, i'll just um I, um we had a meeting with um, one of the main prospective fundraisers a few weeks ago um, and I think that the, the goal of the select board uh, and the goal of pretty much everybody involved is to, to make that project happen without taxpayer dollars or with very minimal. Um, in order to do that, we have to have fundraisers on board. We have to have um, our um, uh, grant making partners on board. Uh, a Land and Water Conservation Fund is one of those primary mm -hmm. entities. Um, what we are looking at right now to make it very quick is um, to have that um, article on the town meeting warrant to uh, see if we can get voters to uh, agree to a no tax dollar project in June. Um, between now and June, we will be working on applying for the Land and Water Conservation Fund um, funding. Uh, if we have a, an affirmative vote, um, then they will move forward with uh, at, you know, the review process. And if we are awarded the funds, which we have a very high likelihood of, of having that happen if the project is placed at the fairgrounds. Um, if that happens, we will then be able to potentially start planning and design work, uh, or, or not design, but planning work for the, for the construction in the fall and potentially the spring of 2024. Um, so we're, we're still a long ways out, but that's the horizon we have right now. It's being driven by the money and the, fu and the funding from grant agencies. Thank you. That's a great, Thank you. very thorough answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew he'd know. So, uh, anyone else, either online or not? If not, uh, then what we may do is adjourn briefly before we begin our 7.30 meeting, uh, just for the sake of, of everyone's you know, getting up. Um, anyone else for this? Excellent. 
Uh, well, uh, on behalf of the select board, thank you very much to all the chairs that were here, uh, both uh, in person and in Zoom. Um, and thank you all very much for doing what you do, the volunteering and, and giving your time to the betterment of your town is not lost on me. Um, and I certainly appreciate everything that you do and the willingness uh, to, to be a leader uh, in that, I also think is um, uh, commendable. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn this portion uh, of our meeting. Uh, we will begin again at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.